Uh, my name's Rich, uh, and a while back I made this plaster of Paris model of my hand. And while the detail is brilliant, the downside to plaster is it feels temporary and a fine dust comes off in your fingers every time you touch it, so you don't want to touch it. But it's so nice to touch. Whereas resin, plastic resin, like this stuff, is durable and waterproof and you can drop it and it won't smash into a million pieces. So I was wondering how to get a resin version of this. I wondered whether you could make a silicone mould uh, directly from the plaster because I know resin and silicone work great together. The thing was I couldn't find much information about it so I thought I'd give it a try and put my results out there in case anybody had the same problem and wanted to see what happened if you tried to make a silicone mould from a plaster of Paris positive. The short answer is you can. But there are some things I'd do differently next time. So uh, here's what I did and what I used. This original plaster of Paris model came from an alginate mould. I used half of one of these. Uh, this is an Algonart 450 gram bag. For reference, don't use half a bag, use a whole bag. And I followed the instructions, uh, including using a dust mask. There are plenty of YouTube videos on Algonate for reference, so look those up. Use a thermometer and weigh everything, just in case. Uh, originally I'd intended this to be an open-handed model, but very soon into the Algonate process I realised there wasn't enough mixture, so I closed my hand and uh, made a fist instead. Yes, it would have been better to be better prepared, but you can only do so much, and really I'm just doing this for fun. Uh, then, that's the algae. Then I mixed up a batch of plaster of Paris, per the instructions, and poured that into the alginate mould. I used this stuff, Mould Master Fine Casting Powder. This stuff sets in about 20 minutes, and then you can very carefully cut away the solid alginate. Um, you have to be careful, if I can show you this. If you can see that, there is a, like a cut that I made from not being careful. Oh yes! Oh, I'm very pleased with that, look! This wow. is like how my hand is! I saw a video where someone made initial cuts with a blade and then used a plastic edge to finish the cuts to help prevent damaging the plaster, which is super sensible. Do that, don't do what I did. So I had my alkalate mould and poured the plaster of Paris in, made this. So why can't you pour resin directly into the alginate mould? The reason is alginate is really wet and resin doesn't play well with moisture. Moisture prevents the resin from curing properly. That's when it hardens up and you can end up with a slimy skin goo instead of a hard surface. And so what about using something else instead of alginate? I've seen Reynolds makes a platinum silicone called Body Double that lets you create a skin safe life mold directly from your body. So you'd put your arm into the silicone and then using that silicone mold you can cast straight into plastic, wax, concrete or even low temperature melt metal. But I was really pleased with the plaster of Paris hand and so I wanted to see what was possible from a plaster positive. So I let that dry for about a week in a sunny spot and then sealed it with a couple of layers of matte sealer and a couple of coats of MAC wax mould release, letting it dry between each sprayed layer. I figured these would help with the silicone soaking into the plaster, but I was also worried about the sealant and the wax dulling some of the detail of the skin. Uh, the plaster instantly soaked up both of these, well, soaked up the sealant, and visually it didn't look much different after sealing, but it did feel a little less dusty than it did before. 
I don't know if the release agent was really necessary, but it did release nicely afterwards, so that worked. Here's my silicone, bought direct from the manufacturers, Polygraft, Polycraft GP3481F silicone rubber with red catalyst. The working time for this is 40 to 60 minutes. It cures in 6 to 8 hours and you can demold in 12 to 24 hours. I got this 1.1 kilogram kit from my mum for Christmas. It's the only one I've ever used and while it would be convenient to have a shorter curing time, the working time is very comfortable. Also it goes a lovely, easily identifiable shade of pink when it's properly mixed and it doesn't smell awful either. Do be sure to follow the instructions. This silicone requires a 10 to 1 ratio by weight and use protective gloves. Uh, maybe do the next bit in a tray or something because leaks happen. The plan was to make a mould so that in the final stage I'd pour the resin in through the wrist and the mould would have a thick enough base so it would hold itself together. Uh, that meant I needed to create the silicone mould this way up with silicone on top. Like that. Covering it over the top. But I figured if I had this in here like this and just poured it straight in I might have trouble getting coverage like in all the nooks and crannies. So what I did was make up a small batch of silicone and painted it directly onto the plaster. Uh, this also let me gauge whether there are any immediate issues where the silicone made surface contact with the plaster. I thought air bubbles might come out of the plaster like when you squeeze a dry sponge in a bucket of water, but happily they weren't. The silicone actually brushed on really easily to the plaster of the Paris model, getting in all of the skin folds. I couldn't paint around the whole model with the first coat of silicone because I couldn't get under all the overhangs with it in one position because of gravity, it would ooze out. So I applied it on one side first, filling the big wells like under the curled fingers, then when that was dry I'd turn it and fill a different well. I'd then let that dry and fill in more of another side. Something I was counting heavily on was the fact that silicone loves sticking to, to itself so it wouldn't matter about applying it in layers. They'd all hopefully bond enough to form a solid block at the end. Uh, the plan was to build up silicone layers until I was confident enough that a full pour wouldn't find any overhanging tricky bits and make bubbles. Uh, the silicone was applied fairly thinly at this stage. It didn't take long to start curing. I left a few hours between each coat to be sure each layer was cured enough not to mess up with the next brushing layer. It did completely wreck my cheap brush though, so don't use nice brushes for this. I wouldn't recommend it but I kept cutting the brush back open, effectively creating a brush with silicone fingers. But you end up cutting some of the bristles and those get into the layers, so probably don't do that. You see, it just made like a whole solid thing. I may have gone a bit overboard with the number of layers, but it was a good test of seeing whether the technique would even work. It actually worked great, so that's useful to know. Although you might get different results with a different silicone. At this stage, with the fist covered in a layer of nice pink silicone, I poured water into the pot to roughly gauge how much silicone I'd need for the next stage and how big the fist was which was useful to know for later when casting the final resin model. Of course, then I had to let everything completely dry out afterwards. I also put a clay donut under the fist to prevent air getting trapped underneath and hold it to the bottom. Do not do this. I'll tell you why later. So the silicone all mixed up and the fist in the pot. I began a long, slow pour around the model. There was so much silicone required I did it in two batches to make mixing easier. 
This is when it went pear shaped. I'd finished pouring the second batch of silicone into the pot when I realised my calculations must be wrong because I could still see the knuckles were sticking out of the surface and I'd calculated they should be submerged by at least two centimetres. So at first I thought I'd just whip up a third batch of silicone. Then I realised the fist was floating, which is why I could see the top. So after I stopped swearing, I plucked the silicone coated model out of the goo. You must wear gloves for this stuff. And I put it in this ugly cherry rigged hot glue lemonade bottle construction which I'd hot glued to this tray which I'd made but decided not to use because I found the candy floss pot which was a perfect size. So then because I knew I had enough time I did another long slow pour into this container. Effectively, this ended up being a, an unintentional double pour, which is a proper method of reducing bubbles in the mixture. Thankfully, this silicone has a 30 minute working pop time, so it turned out okay, but lesson learned. Anchor your piece, or do what I did next, but don't probably do what I did next. The ugly container was bigger than the candy floss container, so there wasn't enough silicone for it to float. And I thought, well, I'm already relying on cured silicone bonding to new silicone with all the painted layers. So why not go the whole hog? This is the same thing scaled up. I let the whole thing cure overnight with the knuckles sticking out of the top. And then in the morning, I filled up the mould by covering the model plus an extra couple of centimetres to make what would become a solid base and let that cure. The next day, I took the whole silicone mould into the garden for no reason except it was sunny and I cut the silicone to extract the original plaster model. I tried to cut the silicone with curves to provide a locking key for later. The silicone was very thick and tough. Here it is. And I used uh, some scary retractors to hold the silicone open and I retrieved the original in pretty good shape. You can see it's been stained in some places with the pink silicone that I'm not quite sure how to remove so I've left it rather than risk further degradation. Inside the negative mould looked pretty good in terms of structure and skin detail but I could see some unfortunate tears inside where the silicone split on more delicate parts rather than on the big flanks but it kind of looked like they might join up with some care when reconstructing the mould. Here's the resin I use. Polycraft SG2000 PU casting resin comes in a two kilogram kit and mixes on a one to one weight ratio. It's a quick curing two part epoxy, has a short two and a half minute to three and a half minute working pot time and is ready to demold in 30 to 60 minutes. I've previously used this to create a replacement part for my shower. Uh, here was the, the original. It dried up and broken up so I put it back together and filled in some of the missing plastic with clay. I made this mould using that and then here's one of the finished pieces that came out. It even replicated the uh, thread of the screw in the top which is brilliant. It was the first thing I ever tried making with silicone resin and clay and it was ambitious but it turned out better than I could have hoped for and it saved me having to buy a whole new shower unit which is great. I secured the mould with elastic bands 
then measured up the resin using the rough volumes from before, six ounces each in this case, and took a moment to make sure I'd got everything in place, then poured about half of it in. You have to be properly prepared and focused here because of the working time. Of course, during those three minutes, the postman will knock and the phone will ring, but that's what happens. Uh, I rolled the resin around the mould to try and coat the whole internal surface to minimise little air bubbles on the moulding surface and also get the resin up into any overhangs to avoid massive air bubbles. Then fill up the rest of the mould and wait like you're expecting a baby. The curing here is an exothermic reaction, so it's lovely and warm while it's doing it. Obviously don't nudge it and maybe wait until you can see the curing has reached the outside edge before you even think about touching it. But then, mmm, warm. Then the best bit, or possibly the worst bit if it's gone wrong at any stage, is the birthing. There was some flashing around the key line cuts, but not too serious, and I removed them just by rubbing them with my thumbnail. It seemed pretty good, and then, because I could, I immediately made another one. So here's the finished products. The original, as I mentioned before, there was some silicone attachment to the plaster. This might have been reduced by applying more sealant prior to brushing on the silicone. But don't take my word for it, I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, this was the first resin copy. I don't know if you can see, I'll put some pictures in. But there's not 100% of the detail that's in the plaster. But it's pretty good. The form and the presence is all there. And there is good skin pattern. The folds and thumbnail detail. I think if you hadn't seen the ultra detailed plaster version, you'd think it was great. I can drop it without worrying about it smashing into pieces. It's waterproof, and if it gets scratched up, I can make another one in half an hour, in different colours. Here's the second resin positive. You can't really tell, but I added a little blue uh, resin colouring, but clearly not enough. The detail again is almost identical to the first. So I won't be worried next time about the pigment inhibiting the cure. So final thoughts. As an experiment to see if you can get a detailed resin copy from a plaster original, I think this was a success. If you need to keep your plaster original untainted, I'd recommend experimenting first with sealants and release agents on a model that's similar to your original. Maybe it needs more sealant, or maybe it needs less. But this is just something I thought about trying and thought it might be helpful to share. So good luck, let me know how it goes. Happy crafting kids.